Screen printing halftones can be a challenge if you can't hold the halftones in your screen. Hi, I'm Mike from TechSource, and this is Screen Making 102. If you haven't watched our Screen Making 101 on getting the perfect exposure, you should go and watch it now. To burn halftones into a screen, not only do you have to have the exposure dialed in, but you also have to have the correct LPI or dot size angle for the correct mesh count that you're trying to use. Let's start with this chart of common settings for output. The higher the LPI, the smaller the dot, hence the higher mesh count needed. Typically, the mesh count should be at least four and a half times your LPI and 22 and a half on the angle. The lower LPIs will work with the higher meshes, but not the other way around. The gradient range is defined from 0 to 255, but represented from 0 through 100% color. Somewhere in the low end under 10% is where the halftones will usually drop off. Once we determine what halftones won't hold in the screen, we'll adjust the art to eliminate those dots. Let's start by burning a test screen. The top design has a gradient fill that is 1% to 100. The bottom goes from 4% to 100. The film was output at 55 LPI, 22 and a half angle, which is a very small dot for these inkjet film positives, but we'll push the limit and dial back to 45 LPI if necessary. Okay, we've got this screen and I've got it taped up and ready to go in the press here. So let's get this set up so that we can do a little test print. The expectation is the top one won't hold the low end half tones and the gradient won't come all the way to the top. This is a 305 mesh and I will be printing on Pellon. But I will have the half tones all the way through the bottom image. Really helps to have a squeegee at this juncture. Not too bad, I am losing detail right here at the top of this gradient that's going from four to 100%. It really looks smooth, but we're not holding the 4%. In fact, down here on the chip, the 5% dot here barely has anything on it. And this four right here and under is absolutely nothing. So my expectation is we would have more halftone. So my results here are pretty good, but not good enough. Now the gradient that I have here on this top one that goes from one to 100%, you can clearly see that right up here towards the top, it completely breaks away where I lose any kind of tonal. I expected that. I did not expect to, to hold this 1% dot up in here. However, where this gradient has a 4%, I was hoping to hold it up here towards the top, but it breaks away up there because I'm not holding this highlight dot in the screen. Since I couldn't hold the 55 LPI down to a four or 5% dot, I'm going to output the films again at 45 LPI and try to hold that with these inkjet film positives. So the first attempt to burn these gradients at 55 lines per inch was not a success. I was not able to hold a 5% or 4% and I had the breakout at the top of the logo. And it's good to push the limits of what you're doing to its edge and then drop back. So in this case, we burned another screen, this time at 45 lines per inch. And I can tell by looking at the screen that I'm going to have a better result. And so I'm going to print that now. I'm just using a little of the Gen Series Process Black. And 
this gradient should go all the way to the top. And I also have a halftone scale here. And although it's very light, you can see the 4% creeping in here. But we are at the very edge of what we can achieve. And that's what you want to know. So when you're doing your artwork, you can have a minimum of that 4%. But yeah, this is really good. This, this actually held halftone all the way through the top. Like you can see it on the, the star there. And then we have our gradient scale down here that just helps us measure and see how clean the dots are across the board. Now that I know the limitations of my screen making process, any half tones that I try to print in the future will be at the minimum of 4% at 45 LPI. This will prevent any unexpected results when printing gradients in the future where they abruptly end with haphazard results. In the next and final part of this screen making series, we'll discuss dot gain and how to correct for it.